Hello everybody, in case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. A couple of weeks ago, I created a video on how to turn Adobe Atmos master file into an MP4 for quality control. I'm going to leave a link to that uh, video in the description below. And in that video, we found that there aren't really that many options to do that. And the reason for that is because the MP4 requires a very particular file format, a very, very particular encoding format. And uh, we found that there are actually only two really realistic options that we have. The one is uh, going through the external Dolby Atmos renderer. And the second one was to go through the Amazon Web Services, in particular through the Media Convert service. And uh, I stopped short of actually demonstrating on how exactly that works. And some of you have asked me to make a video and show how uh, we can use Media Convert for that purpose. So this is what I'm going to do today. So today I'm going to show you how to turn Adobe Atmos master file into an MP4 using Amazon Media Convert. Now, before I get started, a uh, big shout out to user IAMMPS. I hope I pronounce you correctly. Uh, you have been very active uh, both on the YouTube discussion board, but also on my Discord server. And, and uh, you've actually pointed out that uh, Amazon Media Convert is actually capable of understanding uh, Dolby Atmos master files natively. In the original video, I said that you would first have to convert it into a channel based 7.1.4 or 9.1.6 format which is sort of what uh, the uh, documentation of Amazon Web Services demands. However, it turns out that, uh, that uh, it's probably an undocumented feature or the documentation has not been uh, essentially updated yet. Uh, Amazon Web Services understands Dolby Atmos master files natively as an input format so we can convert directly from the, the master file into MP4. So thank you for pointing that out. And the uh, sec second comment I need to make is if you liked the video, please don't forget to press the like button because of YouTube algorithms. Uh, if you uh, get value of the things that I do, please consider subscribing. And if you want to participate, uh, you can do that either by leaving comments in the comment section below, or you can also join my Discord community. A link is in the description below where you can interact with uh, a lot of really interesting people that have a lot of really interesting ideas. And uh, it's actually very active. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy that that actually turned out that way. Now, uh, with that being said, let's get into converting some media files. Now, before we get started with Amazon Web Services, there are a couple of things that we need to do. The first thing, obviously, is you need a, uh, an Amazon Web Services account. So if you don't have one yet, set one up. Uh, be aware that this is not an instantaneous process, so it takes a little bit. Uh, in my case, this uh, took about a day. However, this was some time ago. I'm not completely sure how the current uh, time is that it takes to set that up, but it's not completely instantaneous. Setting up the account is free. However, be also aware that all the services or most of the services that uh, are offered by Amazon incur some sort of fee. Also, the services that we are going to use today, in particular the Media Convert service, requires you to pay a little bit of money. Uh, it's not really a whole lot. It's actually very inexpensive. It's usually fractions of a dollar, but just be aware, it's not completely free. Once the account has been set up, uh, please log into that account and you will see the management console. Uh, and uh, there are essentially two services that we're going to use today. And you can see all the services that are available to you by clicking on the old services button. We're going to use the, and we need to go down here to media services, the media convert service. That's the one that we're going to use. That's going to turn the master file into an MP4. And then we also need to use one of the storage services, in particular the S3 service. And the reason for that is because of the way the media convert service works. So what media convert really does is it, it looks into a particular storage bucket that you have on Amazon, uh, takes a file from that storage bucket, converts it, and then essentially puts the resulting uh, conversion back into that storage bucket uh, from where you can download it. So we need to also create a storage bucket. And once again, be aware that both services incur a small fee. Uh, once again, not a whole lot, fractions of a dollar, but still. 
So if we want to convert a Adobe Atmos master file uh, using Amazon Web Services, the first thing we therefore need to do is we need to set up a storage bucket where we can upload the original master file. Uh, and uh, the, the way to do that is we need to go into the storage S3 section to the S3 service. So let's click on that. Once I uh, open that service up, I will see all the buckets that I already have. Now, in my particular case, I didn't really have a bucket created yet. So let's create one. Uh, we put, press the create bucket button and let's call that Michael G. Wagner dash Atmos. Uh, the uh it, it has to have a unique name just be aware of that so if if anybody else on this in the network has the same has the same name it will it will come back with an error and essentially tell you do you need to create something with a with a unique name but this should be fine i'm i'm doubting that anybody else using is using that uh and we can leave everything else alone um so let's just create that bucket and it will then come back with that bucket that has now been created uh, and uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to upload our master file into that bucket. So let's go into the bucket and upload a file. Now the file that I'm going to use is essentially the uh, test file that I created in one of the previous videos. And if you want to use the exactly same file, uh, please go to my Discord community, to the Discord invite link. Uh, and in the Discord community, you will find a, a channel where I upload all the additional materials and there you can download it. But once again, it's really it's really uh, completely up to you. You can use any master file. The master file has to be in a broadcast wave format. So this is this Atmos test master file. So let's upload that. And uh, we essentially don't need to say anything. I can turn it, uh, put it into a particular folder. I'm not going to do that. And we're just going to upload. And it's then going to upload that file into the S3 storage bucket. Once you've uploaded that, and that might take, uh, you know, kind of, it can be almost instantaneous, or it might take a little bit depending on the size of your file. And quite frankly, also of the network, this is already the second time I'm creating that video, because the first time when I tried to create that video, the net network was so congested. Uh, that I couldn't really upload anything. Uh, but in my particular case now, it was almost instantaneous. In any case, uh, once you've done that, you will essentially see the test file into in your uh, bucket, into in your stock storage bucket, and we can go on um, converting that file into an MP4. So let's go to the services tab again, and uh, you can either go, uh, you know, there are many different ways now you can get back to the management console. But let's, actually, let's go back to the console home so that we have everything clear. And what we need to do is we need to go to the media convert service. Um, now, once you've used it uh, once, essentially it shows up in the recently visited sites, but let me just go, go here so that we are going to use the media convert. Uh, and that brings me to the media convert service. Um, if you want to know about the pricing, uh, you know, kind of uh, check out the pricing details. Once again, it's not particularly much fractions of a dollar, but still. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to create a job. So let's create a job. And uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to give that job the appropriate permissions um, because we, if so far we have essentially uploaded our master file to a storage bucket. But if we don't really kind of give the system permissions to actually access that file and to write into that storage bucket, Media Convert will not be able to do that. The way this is done is through going through the AWS integration. Now, if you do that for the first time, actually it does, it does say that here to me, Media Convert currently doesn't have permissions needed to run this job. So we need to go to the AWS integration settings and uh, we need to create a service access role. And um, what we, you, there are many different ways on how you can do that. Well, first of all, we are going to create a new service and we have two options. We can either give it full permissions or we can conf configure the permissions. I'm just going to configure permissions here. We can give it a name uh, and then we're going to add a location. And the location that we really want is we want to have access to our storage bucket. Uh, this was the Michael G. Wagner dash Atmos storage bucket. So I'm going to choose that one. And also same thing for the output settings. Um, you know, kind of if you use it regularly, what you're probably going to do is you're going to set up a workflow for yourself, having a particular bucket for the input, a particular bucket for the output, and essentially define a service role for that purpose. And then let's create that service role. And uh, once that service role is created, uh, we should be fine to convert our media file. 
Now, when you do it exactly the same way I did it, uh, it will come back with two uh, messages. And the first one is that the service role has been created. And the second one is that there's currently no output group defined. And the reason for that is because we haven't done anything yet. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to de uh, define the, our input. And the input, once again, is going to be our um, master file that we uploaded to our storage bucket. So let's go into the input settings. And here we can define the, the, uh, the input file URL. And uh, we are going to select the uh, storage bucket that we have here. And the, the file that we're going to use is the Atmos test file. It's going to, it should come up essentially with everything correctly. And then we can choose that. And uh, that should do everything for the input because we are not really doing anything fancy with it, quite frankly. Uh, it's just going to be the conversion of an audio file from one format into another format. The first time you look at it, it, all the different options that you have in Media Convert, you might be a little bit overwhelmed, but that's primarily because it's so flexible. We are not going to use 99.9% .9 of all the functionality, so don't, don't let that distract you. Uh, we also need to define now where we're going to store that. So we're going to add an output group, and the output group we're going to add is going to be a file group. And uh, this file group, essentially, here in the output settings, uh, let me first define a destination. Uh, of that file group and we are going to put it back into the storage bucket. Once again, we could define a different storage bucket, but uh, let me just define that destination and let's choose that one. And then we need to set the output settings, which essentially means we need to set the encoder settings here. So I'm going to go into the output uh, settings. Now there are two different uh, you know, selections here, the video and the audio. Now we are not really having any video here. Um, now in uh, uh, one of the comments in one of the videos, actually somebody asked what, what can I do if, if uh, I want to essentially kind of show a, a video file with Atmos content to a customer and you could technically go through Adobe, uh, you could technically go through uh, Amazon uh, Media Convert by essentially using a an output from uh, DaVinci Resolve Fairlight that you can uh, that you can access. So, for example, a 9.1.6 audio output for the video, and then essentially go into Media Convert and convert it into a Adobe Atmos capable uh, video file. But in our particular case, we don't really have video, so I'm going to remove simply going to remove the video section. We don't need it. And uh, in the out audio settings, I'm going to select the audio settings that I need, uh, and uh, the coding that I need is Dolby Digital plus uh, with joint object coding uh, it says here atmos and uh, what that really is is a uh, essentially a, a channel based 5.1 file that contains some additional metadata that allows atmos capable playback systems to reconstruct the atmos and the advantage of doing it that way is that it is uh, it gracefully downgrades to systems that are not atmos capable so if you're using that file and you play it on an atmos system it will actually play in atmos if you use the very same file and you play it on a system that is not atmos capable it will downgrade to 5.1 or even to stereo and everybody will have the correct impression and that's why you want to use that for, for quality control because uh, essentially you can then test if your production sounds good on a variety of different systems atmos as well as non-atmos capable systems now this is sort of the a little confusion that i had uh it, it it tells me the input requirements and actually if you go into the uh, into the documentation, it will actually specify that, uh, you know, kind of it, or at least it will not list Dolby Atmos master files as a potential input format. However, as it turns out, uh, it actually does well with Adobe Atmos as input. So let's, let's just leave it like that. And the uh, second thing that we are going to set here, we are not going to do anything here really, uh, but we are going to change the bitrate. The standard bitrate is set to 448 kilobit per second. Now, if you remember in the uh, specifications, or in, in, the, in the previous video, we, we looked at the file that came out of the Dolby Atmos renderer and it was encoded in 768 kilobit per second. So you can choose uh, 768 in order to get exactly the same file that you're getting out or at, at least exactly in the same way encoded as, as it would be encoded by the Dolby Atmos renderer where you can even go higher. Uh, so essentially Media Convert allows you to go even higher than that. But I'm going to simply choose 768 in order to make that... Um, essentially equivalent and uh, the final thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to add a name and modifier so so that i know that uh, this is sort of a conversion so i'm going to simply say add mp4 to the name of the file so that i identify this as as the mp4 that is 
essentially created through the media conversion function would not ne be necessary because it has a different file extension. But you know, kind of just just for for the sake of everything everything clear. And with that being said, we have the MPEG4 container. The extension essentially is going to be chosen automatically. And that should be it. So all we allow it to do is create that job. And once we create the job, it will submit the job to this to the Amazon cloud and, and run it. So let's push the create button and and let's wait. Now, depending on the, the size of your file and quite frankly, also on the network conditions. Um, and once again, when I first tried to create the video today, I had a, uh, a essentially one of the servers of, Am of the Amazon Web Services system was down and it took about an hour to convert my file. Now, usually that should come back almost instantly. Uh, in my particular case, now it took exactly 11, 11 seconds to convert that file. But once again, uh, if it takes a little bit, don't be worried. This might actually kind of take a bit of time. Um, uh, it's essentially a job that you are submitting to the Amazon Web Services. It's going to be queued there and then essentially it's going to be processed in the order at, in, at which this, this, these jobs are coming in. But once you are uh, essentially done, the uh, media convert uh, console will come back with a job summary and in this job summary you can essentially see uh, the start time, the finish time, uh, essentially it was three seconds in the queue. So this was really, really fast. And the transcoding duration, it was about 11, 11 seconds. So, um, and uh, with that, we now have everything. So the last thing we really need to do is we need to download that file. So let's go back to our storage bucket. So let's go back to the console home maybe. And uh, yeah, let's click here on our S3. And let's look into the storage bucket. Uh, it's Michael Chivagner.atmos. And now I have these two files, the original master file, and then I have the master file. It added the MP4 as a naming extension, and it's down, it's, it's sort of converted that into an MP4 uh, with the Dolby Digital Plus with joint object coding um, encoder. And uh, let's simply download that. So let's press download and let's let's download that to where the uh, other files are. And then let's see uh, if if the if the file is exactly the way we wanted it to be. The best way to check what we actually have now is to simply kind of look at the uh, the metadata. Uh, and one way to do that is through a little program that's called Media Info. I'm going to post a link in the description below. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm simply going to compare it with the output of the Dolby Atmos renderer. And uh, let me just kind of go to my uh, local drive. So here I have the uh, original Dolby Atmos uh, MP4 export from the Dolby's renderer. Uh, I already opened up media info, so let's drop that in here. And we can see that this is a six, 768 kilobit per second, 48 kilohertz, six channel EAC3 joint object coding. That's Dolby Digital Plus with Dolby Atmos. And uh, the one that has been created through web services is the second one here is the MP4, which is called the, the Atmos test dash master file dash MP4. So let's drop that in here. And we essentially see that nothing really has changed. And the reason for that is because it is exactly encoded in exactly the same way. So we have now created a, uh, an MP4 that we can use for quality control. This MP4 plays back on every system. Uh, regardless of whether or not it is Atmos capable or not Atmos capable. And uh, it is exactly the same file that you're getting out of a, uh, Adobe, Adobe Atmos renderer. Uh, once again, not entirely free. So uh, I'm probably going to have to pay like a, a buck for, for doing what I just did, but uh, it certainly beats buying an entire essentially Dolby Atmos renderer setup, especially if you are on the Windows system and uh, we would have to buy a Mac in order to be able to really do that. So this is everything I wanted to say today. Uh, thanks so much for your continuing discussions and comments. Uh, these are very, very valuable. I, I actually learn probably most of everybody in this group here uh, because, you know, as, as, as people, many teachers say, if you if you're doing stuff and if you're explaining stuff, you actually learn it. And uh, so for me, it's a big learning experience and keep the questions coming, keep the comments coming, contribute to the Discord community link in the uh, invite link in the description below. And with that being said, uh, see you at the next video.